Hello and welcome to Curiosity Taught the Cat Extinct Edition. I'm Jack. I'm Julia. And today we're going to be talking about the Spix's Macaw. You want to go ahead and jump right in with Yeah, so it actually does have a couple different nicknames. Um, another one is called the Little Blue Macaw. Um, and another one is, um, I'm, I might butcher this pronunciation, but it's the Aranaiha Azul. Um, I definitely said that completely wrong. Uh, but it's actually named after the uh, German scientist that discovered it, the Spix's yep. Macaw. So that is the last name of the scientist that discovered it. Yep. So obviously this is the extinct edition episode. So we were talking about an extinct animal. Uh, this is one that's a very interesting one compared to other ones we talked about. This is one that is extinct in the wild. So there are still Spix's Macaws left in the world. It was declared uh, extinct in the wild in 2019, actually. So only three years ago. Um, and as of right now, there are only about 180 in captivity. So this is a creature that is doing not so great. It is considered extinct. And for all intents and purposes, it most likely will go extinct. But there's always holding out and hoping that through uh, modern science and the uh, breeding capabilities that we have, that we can ev eventually reintroduce this creature back into the wild. Um, and where the Spix's macaw was found was it was actually endemic to Brazil. Um, and it was in a very um, uh, small part of Brazil in this very small area that it was found. Um, and it was usually in like dry forests along streams. Um, but even bo before they went extinct in the wild, they were very, very rare to find in the yeah. wild itself. Just because of, like I said, that small location that they were found in. Um, they were rare sightings already. So um, it was already a kind of a rare species of bird to begin with um which kind of uh led to its extinction in the wild as a whole yep and then as for how it looks you can see it looks very similar to other uh blue macaws there is multiple different kinds of blue macaws the two big ones are going to be the blue macaw and the hyacinth macaw those are two macaws that have a very blue color the spix macaw has a kind of more muted blue so they got a gray head and then almost kind of like a muted blue uh and they are a type of parrot macaws are a type of parrot um and so they were recognized as a species in 1832, uh, which was 13 years after the first specimen was collected, and it was misidentified as a hyacinth macaw by Johann Baptist Ritter von Spix. So we call it the Spix's macaw after him. Uh, the next report of a wild one came in 1903. So almost uh, 80 years uh, it took, or about 70 years, uh, for the next report of a wild one to come through. And then there was an even another longer dry spell uh, up until 1985, uh, when only five individuals were counted. Then by the end of 1987, only one wild male remained. And as I mentioned earlier, the IUCN officially declared the species extinct in the wild in 2019. And then just getting into some of the physical characteristics about this bird. Um, we already mentioned the color of it. As you can see, it has a beautiful plumage color. Um, one thing that is very cool is that the male and the female are actually look completely identical um, outwardly. So with a lot of different bird species, the males usually are very colorful and flamboyant because they uh, put on these very uh, like outward displays to try to win the females over. But the female and the male actually look completely the same in this species. And uh, some other things about them. So they have a flatter, more nasal quality to their calls um, than the resonant screeches of many other larger macaws. So you get a lot of screeching. This one's are more nasal quality type sounds. Um, and some notes almost sound crow-like. I've listened to a few of them. And they do almost sound like crows. Like if I didn't know any better, I would assume it's some, side of, some kind of corvid. Um, and so like other macaws, uh, they depend on trees. Uh, so they use the trees for everything, for nesting, uh, for spending time, for hunting, that sort of thing. Uh, and they usually use uh, carabira trees. I most likely am pronouncing that wrong. But those are the kind of trees they would use in Brazil, uh, which usually grow along streams. And that was the main nest site that a lot of these spixes macaw used. And then uh, when it came to mating, a female usually laid about, or will lay two to three eggs, and she incubates them for about a month. Once hatched, Nestlings remain in the nest cavity for two months before emerging to follow and receive food from their parents for another about three months. Uh, and they don't reach breeding age until about four years old. 
And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, they like the blue macaws. Um, we've seen their, their appearance, but they're actually one of the smallest uh, blue macaw species. Um, they can only they only get up to about twenty two inches long at the most, which is actually very small for the macaw species. Um, and over half this length itself is actually just their tail. And their wingspan can only get about a foot long at the most. So, like I said, for um, a macaw species, for a parrot species, they don't get that large. Yep. Uh, and then as for food, uh, similar to pretty much all other birds, it's seeds and fruits mostly and nuts. Uh, not as much insectivores uh, or uh, not so much insect diet as other birds, but seeds, fruits, and nuts are going to be the, the main food sources for the Spix's macaw. And then getting into um, its extinction in the wild. Um, as most of you can probably guess, the reason it became extinct was due to habitat loss as well as poaching. Um I'm sure before a lot of uh, of place things were put into effect for these birds, people hunted them for their color. They uh, captured them to put on international trade to sell them, and then just the habitat loss in that area um, of South America that um, is being cleared for these trees. And like we said, their tree is is their way of life. They need these trees to live. So all this combined together just kind of pushed them out of that area into extinction in the wild. And then another interesting uh, reason for the Spix's macaws uh, decline, as well as some other birds decline in the Brazil area, it's going to be a real interesting thing to, to explain, but it's going to be goats. Uh, and the reason for that is goats eat about just about any plant. They will eat any plant they come across. Uh, so wild goats, uh, and especially if they get in big enough numbers, can wreak havoc on uh, forested areas or anywhere there's plants growing. Uh, and this can really hurt the the macaws or any other uh, animals that may be in the area as the goats are kind of ravaging these places. Less and less things will grow, which means less and less food for these birds. And you see these numbers really start to decline. Um, and then along with this, um, there are some good things happening for these macaws, some really good things happening for them. Um, one of them is, like we mentioned, there's over about 180 in captivity right now. And in this captivity, there are multiple breeding programs happening at different institutions and zoos, um, just trying to grow their numbers. Um, and there's even some things being in place to try and reintroduce them to their native habitat in Brazil. So there are some good things happening for them. Um, so it's, it's looking up, we're looking upward for the species right now, which is a great thing. And some fun news on that front, actually, uh, this year in June, some Spix's macaws were actually reintroduced into the wild. So how they do the reintroduction with these Spix's macaws, since they haven't been in the wild for, we don't know how long, uh, what they do is they will take, um, other macaws that were raised in captivity and they will release them with the Spix's macaw. So it may be ones that were, uh, maybe a generation or two, uh, removed from being wild ones but we release them with the spixes macaws in hopes that these other macaw species help with numbers game for safety for protection that sort of thing as well as being able to help find food sources uh good trees to nest in help these uh captive born macaws learn how to re-navigate the wild again and i think that wraps up everything that we have on the spixes macaw um, uh, the one last thing is uh, we were talking oh, about, yeah, uh, were. I'll, I'll let you get into that. Um, I, so I forgot about this. So um, what, we just actually, we looked it up right before this episode. So the Spix's Macaw is actually in um, a kid's movie that came out a little while ago, uh, the movie Rio. Um, and so there are blue macaws and they are actually Spix's macaws. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of this like help with like, um, you know, reintroducing them to the wild and trying to boost their numbers actually came from this movie because it raised awareness to how low their numbers were. And even in the movie, that's what they were trying to do was trying to boost their numbers and reintroduce them into the wild. Yeah. So I thought that'd be a little fun fact for everybody to uh, now you can go and watch Rio and have a little bit of hope that maybe maybe we can get back to that one day. Um, but yeah, as Julie was saying before, that that wraps up everything we have on the Spix's Macaw. Uh, we wanted to do one that was a little different rather than being ancient extinct, recent extinct. This is one that's extremely recent extinct and isn't technically gone yet. Um, but yeah, that wraps up everything we have. We appreciate you tuning in or thanks for watching. If you're watching our videos, let us know what you think, how that's going for you guys. Uh, be sure to tune in for the next extinct episode where we're going to be talking about the Carnotaurus.